Yo, what's good everybody? Mr. Fantastic, Fantastic Hip Hop back here with a brand new review on Isaiah Rashad's new album, The House Is Burning. Now, ever since signing to Top Dog Entertainment in 2013, Tennessee rapper Isaiah Rashad has been looked at as one of the most promising names in all of hip hop. His debut album, Sylvia Demo, was instantly praised for its daring sound and heartfelt subject matter, and his sophomore follow-up, The Sun's Terrain, garnered even more attention, including a nod at my very own fantastic hip-hop top 50 albums of the 2010s list due to its vibrant sound and pain-ridden lyrics that covered everything from Zay's depression to his struggles with addiction. After a long five years, Isaiah has finally released his long-awaited third LP, The House Is Burning. Now, with 16 tracks and features from big names like SZA, Black, J-Rock, and Lil Uzi Vert, will Zay be able to prove that this half-decade-long wait was worth it and deliver us his magnum opus, or will he create hip-hop's next major disappointment? Opening up the record, we have the mysterious intro track, Dark Shed. Now, going into this song, it's essential to understand Darkshed is a practically invincible villain from the DC Universe's New Gods series. Now, out of all the forces of evil Zay could have chosen, he selected this particular character as he's known to target his enemies solely based on the power and stature that they hold. Isaiah's chorus brings this idea full circle as it poses the question of if it's truly worth getting rich and famous, as many who do end up putting themselves in a type of danger that can very well lead them to a premature death. Through his slippery delivery and faint vocals, Rashad haunts the listener over a chopped up vocal sample, which ultimately makes for one of the most powerful intro tracks of 2021. Quickly changing the tone, From the Garden kicks off with a jazz band rolling their drums and blowing their horns for one of the most climactic beat buildups I have heard in a very long time. Now, just as you think this sonic explosion couldn't get any better, an unknown vocalist screeches at the top of their lungs at the heart of this crescendo, and you really get a sense of thrill and excitement that only a handful of other tracks have ever made me feel. Now, just as you're waiting for all this to drop and get what could actually be the greatest beat drop of all time, the beat just cuts off, and then we're just hit with a very standard trap beat. Now, wrapping over this beat, Isaiah just excretes some basic flaunts and phrases, but the production does intensify, save this lackluster showing with its eerie screeches and pulsing synths. Then the second half of the track, Lil Uzi comes and rescues the day with his charismatic verse that steals the show. Now, all in all, this is actually like a really hard banger. It's definitely one of the hardest tracks of the year. But its placement on the record confuses me and now is opening me up to the concern that Isaiah Rashad is going to attempt to make a lot of trap songs here and compromise his integrity and his sound, which would be the worst thing after waiting five years for a record. And now guess what? For the next track, we stay in the trap lane with Rip Young, which keeps things pretty unadventurous in every facet outside of Isaiah's smooth vocal cadence. Now, the free-flowing but poorly structured lyrics end up amounting to absolutely nothing, and the gloomy instrumental feels like it's definitely missing some sort of layering and coding. Now, pouring salt in the wound, we get a skit in the cut's closing seconds that samples the viral clip from Bubba Breezy, where he appreciates the beauty of a rainbow despite his street credit and hard reputation. And while the actual skit here does a fine job at playing into the album's somewhat established themes, being tough while also enjoying life, scoring these spoken words is a song from TikTok. Yes, an album we have waited five years for is using beats from literal TikTok, and I couldn't find the name of the actual song, but it's one of those sad, mellow, generic TikTok songs that you've probably heard a million times. And now, following this moment, we get another banger-oriented cut, but this one is absolutely great. It's the album's lead single, Lay With You, and this is the definition of a trap cut done right. Now, you get an intuitive instrumental that samples no other than 3-6 Mafia, a menacing verse from Isaiah where he's testing every limit possible, we get a solid feature from Memphis rapper Duke Deuce. This is easily the best moment in this string of commercial-friendly cuts. Claymore is definitely a highlight in the track list with its memorizing hook, vibrant instrumental, and show-stealing performance from Shmino. Now, when Isaiah allows himself to just kick back and open up his mind through a series of deluded thoughts, he ends up painting a pretty good picture that contributes to the overall ideas that have been addressed, and the vibrant aesthetic is just so chill and it's so mellow, it is so hard not to enjoy this track. Now, Headshots was another great moment in the tracklist as it masters the mellow aesthetic Zay aims to achieve for most of the album's duration by sonically having some of the best drum usage that I've seen in a while. And then on top of that, Isaiah's mind raveling verses and just so mellowed out smooth flows are just so therapeutic to both the ear and the soul. Now, continuing down this trance, the dream like all Herb continues to show Isaiah's ability to sink you out into his tripped, one-of-a-kind atmosphere between its instrumental, which sounds like it's straight off an early 2000s video game loading screen, 
and calm vocal presence from both Isaiah himself and featured guest the Mindy, who sounds really good on this beat. I mean, overall, between the vocal chemistry, the atmosphere, it feels like you're actually drifting off into the next dimension. And adding to the mastery of this cut, on top of all these things, the lyrics alluding to death and personal insecurities and flaws layer this moment with the perfect sheer of darkness. Now, using this momentum of the subject matter to play into the next track, the brief but vital Hey Mister brings back the chaotic trap feel of the record's earlier cuts, but in a more refined way. Now, between Isaiah's monotone pocket and his ability to play with an array of vocal effects, this is one of his best performances sonically, but once again, his fragmented lyrics amount to nothing meaningful or even understandable. Now, following this, the fast-paced true story brings Zay together with fellow TDE signee Jay Rock and LND Drugs member Jay Worthy for a crossover that showcases all three MC's strengths. Now, the up-tempo instrumental adds the perfect rush to the track's adrenaline, and the only real issue to be found is that the cut's chorus is just way too drawn out. What you said is another track that just feels very plain all around. Now, Isaiah actually does spit one of his better verses on the entire album here, but the plain instrumental and quite honestly annoying feature from Dolce just leaves the track feeling unfinished and empty. Now, picking up in all regards, Don't Shoot shows what Isaiah Rashad is at his absolute and utter best. Now, playing between a monotone and level delivery while wearily rapping about gang violence and its dangers, all while the subtle but well-produced instrumental evolves with Zay's ideas and thoughts, this cut is without a doubt one of the premier showings in the entire LP and one of the better tracks in Isaiah's catalog as a whole. Now, continuing the record's themes of inconsistencies, Chad brings us back to the very straightforward-sounding vibey trap formula. Now, there's a pretty interesting performance from guest YG Toot, and I hope I pronounced that right, but, um, you know, his feature does really pick things up, but overall, I'm just really left questioning the direction of this track and the record as a whole to this point. The playful 9-3 freestyle was actually pretty good with its silly yet honest lyrics about the various females they has relations with and the toxic habits they come with. Now, hearing their wants and needs clash with the Tennessee MC's desires and fantasies is actually pretty comical, and with its hardening instrumental, the soundscape gets a nice breath of fresh air. Produced by the one and only Kenny Beats, Score is a well-put-together and angelic anthem that's love-filled ideas are masterfully portrayed through the performances of Zay, SZA, and Black. Now, I love the sound and feel of this track, but just like From the Garden with Uzi, I'm wondering what relevance this cut has to the ideas and themes of the house is burning, and the only reason I can even see it being here is just to add a commercial boost and another great song to SZA and Zay's catalog. Now, setting the cards in play for a strong close, Thib finally shows us the emotional climax we've been waiting to see from Isaiah. Now, its abstract instrumental and combination of Rachad's distorted vocals and paranoia-filled lyrics channel the inner chaos within the 30-year-old's head and point that the meaning of the record refers to the fire inside Isaiah's mind more than the fire going on anywhere else. Now, bringing things to an ultimate finale, HB2U is another peak moment with its glorious instrumental layering and heart-to-heart -heart conversation between Isaiah and the listener. Now, rapping about the tragedies of his life as a star, Rashad brings the intro full circle as he fleshes out the ideas on if being famous is truly worth it. Now, one of the best aspects of this near six-minute cut is Isaiah's raw and unaltered vocals. He's not trying to be a showman. He's just trying to converse with the audience and himself as he channels about a decade worth of memories to paint this thematically frightening yet empowering picture. Now, in the second half of the song, we see the instrumental switch up and Isaiah's singing build up as he reveals his worst problems like addiction and depression, which are still very well lingering and have not changed since his last record, The Sun's Terrain. Now, this beautiful outro is honestly the perfect way to end the record, as Rashad does all this in order to just humanize himself, and now he can focus on living a normal life like the rest of us everyday people. Overall, The House is Burning has some great moments and shows that Isaiah is still one of the more talented names in hip-hop, but its attempt at making a more commercial sound at the compromise of its true goals and ideas make it an inconsistent mess. Now, the vibey tracks on this LP are quite amazing and probably the smoothest anthems I've heard since The Sun's Terrain, but the problem with this album is that in an instant, we can go from a slow-paced, heartfelt reflection on Isaiah's life choices and without getting a second to breathe, we're getting another basic trap anthem shoved down our throats. And don't get me wrong, there's definitely more good than bad on this record, but was it worth the five-year wait? Absolutely not. Now, this has honestly been one of the tougher records to score, but I'm going to be giving this a 6.8 out of 10. Now, let me know your thoughts on my rating and the house is burning as a whole. Now, be sure to drop your favorite tracks too, because there definitely was so many fun and really good anthems on this record. Now, thank you guys for watching. I love you guys so much. 
Mr. Fantastic, Fantastic Hip Hop, signing out. Have a great day. Peace.